Okay, guys, I've got up here, this is, a, this is um, well, the equivalent of a 7-2 Renko. And I want to go over a couple of things. One, we're going to look at the, the edge and how it fits into the Renko template. But I want to draw your attention to a couple of things first, and we'll just do a little quick review. And then maybe a little bit more nuanced training into how to read the, the power trio down here. So the first thing I, that I, I want to discuss here is switching over to working with the Uni Renko. Now the only difference between our, our the TDU Renko and the Uni Renko is that we're getting another variable. So if we're just using a traditional TDU Renko, a mean Renko, we've got we've only got two variables: the brick size and the and the, and the uh, trend threshold. So seven two. Now here, we, we, it, so seven two is you will often see the S and P will be there if you're a Renko trader. You'll see it's seven two, but for much of the last few months. The volatility has been so high. I, I, this is I've seen 12, 4, 11, 3, 9, 3. These are very common. When we get into those bigger brick sizes, due to the volatility, it becomes very, very difficult to trade these with the kind of stop levels that we're all comfortable with, and that being, well, I guess on the short end, any, anywhere from eight to a 16 tick stop. Well, if the volatility gets up there, and you're 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 looking at a 12, 4, well. You know you're going to have you, you could have a you know 26 tick reversal or or, or or intra bar. So as we look here, you could be in the trade, but if you had a, a 12.4, it, it may still after the fact show that the trend has stayed down, but you could be stopped out intra bar. Right? So it's almost impossible to trade at the at the at the risk tolerance that we're trading with. Unirenko gives you a little bit more flexibility. So we could, in this case, so as the, the, it, let me just show you the variables here. So I, I have really now, there's only four of them that I'm using consistently. And, and so th this being the, well, let's just look at it here. So th this is, um, pardon me, uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to configure. Okay, so let's let's go to our Unirenko here. So let let so here's the first one we just looked at. So this would be brick size is seven, reversal is fourteen, and then the trend threshold, how many ticks to get a new bar, is two, right? With, but that's the equivalent of a seven two. So that said, now what I'm trading with more frequently, particularly in the S and P, is with a four seven one. Right, so the the brick size is four, reversal is seven, and then the trend threshold is just one tick lower to give me a new bar. Now, the only reason I'm not doing that right now is because it it creates it, it's like a small tick chart. We, we it's going to create so many bars, it's going to be a little harder to do this demonstration. But we will switch to it here in the midst of this training. But I'm just going to start here. I want you to see these. Now, if it gets if the volatility really gets higher, if I for for some reason want to see a bigger picture, this is as large as I'll go, which would be the comparable to a 12.3 that you're used to seeing here in the brick size calculator. But this is a a 12.21.3. All right, brick size 12, reversal 21, trend threshold, so three ticks to get a new bar. All right, so those are the three. If, if you need me to send those to you, just just uh, DM me or post it post it in the in the channel, and I'll I'll put these. Oh shit! I, I guess I can put them in the. Um, I'll I'll put them in the channel anyway, just so you guys have them. All right, so I, th these are really the only three that you're going to need for pretty much everything that we look at. All the markets that we're going to need in terms of Unirenko. Um, now let, let's let's uh, let me let me move off that for a second. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go to the four seven one uh, in a bit here. But let me let, let's just focus here for a second on some just conceptually a few things. And this will be consistent when we take when we start looking at reading the indicators. This will be important and variable. All right. So we we all know that this. You know, let's take it away from just the, the idea of a measured move. But the, I, I want you to focus on the concept of threes. We're, we're always trying to trade in sync with a series of threes. So for example, if if we saw a move like this where the, the swing structure gave us, obviously, right, this would be a perfect measured move. But I, I don't necessarily want you to focus on that. If we had the three here and we complete, so if it, if it were a measured move, the next trade that we're looking at, if the indicators were suggesting potential weakness here, we are at a tef technically significant pivot up here. Maybe we're at a golden zone or a 50, you know, or some structure, something that would suggest to us. We don't want to try and pick the top necessarily. 
necessarily, particularly with Renko bars. We don't want to try and pick the top. The trade that we want, if we think we've got a potential turning point in the market, we don't want to try and pick the top. What we want is for the swing and the retrace. That's the trade we want right there. Now, well, let me, I'm going to draw this uh, a, a little bit bigger here. So let me do this here to kind of emphasize the point and kind of highlight the the challenges that we we all we all deal with throughout the course of the day so s stay with me here so if we think for whatever reason again perhaps it's a golden zone and that the the there's a, a potential for a pivot here we're looking for in this case what would be a short trade it's the it's the swing down and then the retrace here that we're interested in now of course, we, we all recognize that as it's coming down here, we've got a couple a couple of hurdles we got to get through. So first is we got to clear the little micro algo that'll be sitting right there, right? We we know that's going to be there, right? Now, you know, I, the course of the price action here, this might be a little a little co compressed here, but you you'll get the basic idea. So we we recognize here that we we got to break this algo first for that to continue because this is we're certainly vulnerable to doing it here right and then the whole thing could start again we're looking for this right and the process starts again but now additionally as this comes down further we could get here to a double bottom we know d double bottoms are pervasive in the market so we have to watch for those right we know they're very common but look now you're going to run into the the golden zone from the pivot below right from this one so first we have to clear this one then we have to clear this one and even if we clear this one right then we got to be worried about this one back here right as this as this comes down so this is the 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 challenge throughout the day it doesn't matter what the market is as we deal with the the algo that we know dominates the market right so, always there both sides never not there never turned off we know it's always there so there is no pivot where we don't have to deal with it we have to contend with it always we it, from every pivot right and so it's the it's the it's the micro then the medium then the large also so we got a small medium and a large pivot we got to deal with and then if there's bigger price action of course we're gonna have to deal with it you know across the board based on prior pivots below or above right so it's just the reality of trading that we that we have to work with now, how do we deal with that? Well, so how, you know, so I, I understand you're thinking, well, shit, well, how, how do we know? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Which one is it going to be? Well, that's where the indicators can guide us and give us some insight into which of these we want to trade. So let me, let me, let's, let's go back here. Now, this is I, the, the only variation here. So this is the, the, the template that you're, you're used to seeing, right? I call it my power trio, right? So these, these three indicators. I do still have the, the volume up down here. All right, and then we're, we're, we are going to look at this additionally with the uh, the delta volume waves on here, which only adds to it. The, there is no template that adding the delta volume waves does not enhance. Right? There's just no way that that is doing anything but giving you more insight into what's happening at those pivots. But I digress. We'll we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so let, let's let, let's just focus here now. Of course, right, we we've got the 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 new version, the updated version, where now we've added the dots instead of just a solid line. Wicked wave and then the devil's pitch with the OBV. So we're getting volume and momentum and variations of how we interpret momentum. So you could think of this as the OBV, the RSI, and the MACD, right? That's really what you're looking at here. These are just turbocharged versions of those, right? They've been deviled up. Okay, so let, let's uh, let's go. Uh, let me go. Let me go back uh, a day because Fridays always kind of suck a little bit here. So this was. Um, Oh, okay. This, this. Uh, I think this is we're. we're this, this, this will work. Okay. So, and what, what I want you to see, what's really important to watch for, is the relationship between these three, these, these three indicators, and how, how you're reading them. So let me let me. This is a decent example here. So we started the day. We get our first pivot. Now we've got a little micro swing here. Now look at look at the both the wicked wave and the edge. Okay. So what's the first thing that we see here right away, right off the bat? The first thing that your eye should be drawn to, the very first thing, because it's so freaking obvious, right? Is the is the devil's pitch, right? What is the background color here? All right. Who who's who, who's in charge here? Right, buyers or sellers. Now, the same thing, right? The devil's pitch oscillates throughout the course of the day as buyers and sellers hand off who's in control. But as we look here, first thing you notice is, okay, we're green. Now, if we're right here at this pivot, of course, we notice that the wicked wave is below the zero line, right? So the trend has been down. This is a great just eyeball reference for, okay, trend, trend strength. Where are we in the trend? 
So it, it, I, I wouldn't want to limit it so that I were only trading long if the wicked wave is above zero. Although that's not a bad, if, if you're just learning how to work with these, that's not a bad filter to use. So that you would only buy, you'd only be looking for buys when the wicked wave is above the zero line and outside of the chop zone. I'm only going to be looking for sells when the wicked wave is below the zero line. That would be a very disciplined approach for someone new to trading this this kind of a template to, to filter right now you might wait a long time for a trade to set up to get everything just right but you're going to have a much much higher winning percentage right and I think that's that's often the struggle that we, that we all deal with is that particularly if you're like like many of us are if we're able to watch the market either the entire day or periods of the day there's a temptation to over trade right because you can always kind of find something that looks like, oh, that, that could be an opportunity. So the, I, I just draw your attention to that for because I know we've got several people that are new to this template, new to working with Renko bars. Maybe you, you dabbled with it with the, um, with the traditional, with the TDU Renko, the mean Renko, and found the volatility was just too high. So you, you went away from that thinking, I, I can't afford the risk here. So um, perhaps you went to micros, which is what we were suggesting previously, which uh, I've done uh, particularly when we get up into the big bar sizes. But I think the Unirenko here lets us stay with the with the larger size contract here and reduce some of that risk. Okay, I, I, I'm digressing a little bit. So, but let's just look here now. Here's the here's the pivot low. Here's the first little retrace. Okay, well, so obviously right here we've got a a measured move, right? So I, I should probably take that off, right? Although I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that most of you will at least, at least have that one or will know to draw it, right? Now, it's the small, it's the inside one, right? It's not the big one. It's, it's, it's this one, right? It's that one, right? It's just a little, little micro. But w as we were just looking at, there's always going to be a little micro. You got the, the small, medium, and the large algos to deal with. Okay, so we get here. Now, look, look what happens here. Now, as I said, you're you're getting more information than you realize here. So it, the the in the wicked wave, this this is our RSI. So as we're rising here, we'll note the wicked wave, the 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 RSI line is green. Okay, and and because it's white now, we're in transition. As in this downtrend is now over. Now look look at how everything relates here. So if we think about the training and the and the 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 uh, video that I just posted on the devil's edge here. As we're coming down here, we get a little bit of separation here. We have the potential for the trip across the river and then the turbo kicker to, to push the market higher. And that's how, as, as I said in that previous video, traditionally this is typically traded as in the push outside of the Bollinger Bands is your, is your sign of strength, right? Knowing that it doesn't stay there, right? And there's an oscillating factor to it. But since we're, we want to be focused on this kind of trade, right? We want this, right? That's what we want. We want to be thinking in threes always, Okay, well, if I'm thinking in threes, and while I've got a little baby threes here, let, let, let's focus on the bigger one. So we've had a push off of a low here, so we have a pivot. So we have the curl in and across the river here with the devil's edge. Right, Wicked Wave has gone green, and additionally note that the, that the RSI is now inside the average, so sign of strength, and RSI is climbing, climbing. Just like the, the devil's edge has gone outside, and now we're climbing. Now look, vortex goes green. Right, and the vortex is always going to lag slightly, but it's a great little trend confirmation. Right, so once I get here, I know I've got everything is firing green. Right, that doesn't mean jump in the market because you're going to see that. And the discipline I'm trying to, to teach you guys is okay. I got all conditions green here, but I want to think in threes. So where's the pullback? Well, now. Here, we're, we're in the first part of the day, but I'm just going to kind of use the edge as the example here. Well, note what happens here. We get outside the bands. We get outside, but our little retrace, right? We don't even make the center line, right? So sign of strength. Now, again, I know this is, what, 935, so it's early in the day, but it's just a good visual reference. Now, here's a, here's a variable that this just will take some time to get in tune with this. And as I talked in the last video, you really you have to live with these indicators and and tra trade with them daily for weeks before you really develop a sense of how they move and the variable here is that if you were looking at this trade right here we're in the chop zone right so this this has to be a judgment call as to whether or not you want to wait until we get out of the chop zone or whether or not you're you're comfortable taking that trade with with the little measured move that's right here and then the and then the kick out of this
Now I have the I have the arrows turned off on the edge here just so we don't you know clutter up the chart because this 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 is technically if you were waiting for all conditions to be perfect we don't get outside of the devil's we don't get outside of the of the uh, chop zone Let's see if I can get it till right right here as we're hitting we're hitting VWAP now you know, do you, do you want to be entering right as we hit VWAP? No, right? We don't, right? We know that's just natural resistance. There's potential. Now we get through, of course, right? but you know, when you're on the hard right edge, you don't know. All you just see is that, hey, I'm popping, I'm popping VWAP. Do I want that? And likely, there, you know, shit, you guys know this, right? There's going to be an algo on the other side, right? So we we can just we know this one. Get get this now, nah, shit. Here, get. It. Yeah, let me try that again. There's likely an algo from the top. Right. Oh God. Okay. I, I have real problems with double clicks. Okay. There we go. All right. So as we come right here, what are we hitting? Golden zone. <laughs> I actually, I had actually not pre-drawn that. I can just eyeball it here. So as you're hitting VWAP here, you know, do do you do you want to be entering V? taking that trade. Oh, I'm out of the golden zone. Or pardon me, I'm out of the chop zone, but I'm running right into VWAP in a golden zone. Probably not, right? That's not a trade you want to take, right? We know better than that, right? It's just, even though it gets through here, right? That, that would be a high risk trade. Let's say it that way, right? So not the trade we want. But a, as we go up here now, we, we bump into this. Now this, it wouldn't be the IB yet. It, it ends up being the IB, but we don't know that at that time because it's only 10.02 here. Now l l look here. This, this is the example I'm trying to get to long-winded way to get there. So I've had this nice, big, I, I, you know, strong trend here. We do not recycle. We do not cross the river. We stay, we got a little dip. It, we put a toe into the river, and then we go, we're back outside. Now up here, right now, now I'm crossing over. So note here, the volatility contracts. I get a very, very narrow river to cross here. I'm across in three dots. Three dots, I'm across the river, and now I've got that. Now, he, here's the trade. It's not trying to pick the pivot here. This is what w w I want you guys to stop doing, right? This is not the trade. Ah, come here. This is not the trade, right? Even though this is here, this is the trade here. That's the trade because this is the, you, you know, the market, right? Wants to go up, right? Bulls want to see a higher high there. It's the failure, right? That's the trade right there. It's this. Here's the entry is right here. All right, now, how do I confirm that? How do I know that that's an entry that I want? How, shit, you know, you're over here. You're going, well, shit, man, that looks like that could be going right up and we're off to new highs. How do I know? How do I, how do I read the indicators to tell me? Well, I mean, it's, you, know, you can probably see this here pretty clearly. Well, number one, we, we've crossed over now. So we've been up above and now we've crossed over. Now, on the retrace here, we don't, again, just like this one, right? So they, look, they're almost mirror images. We, we can't even make the center line. Right, that's how strong the market is. Now here, not only am I getting a lower high, right, but I I can't I can't make it across the river, and I I I start to head down. Now where do I get turbo? Now look at the wicked wave, right? The wicked wave, the RSI is now declining, and we're below the average. So if you wanted to filter out trades based on using these with with the strictest amount of risk discipline you would not take a long unless the rsi is on the other side well two, two things one on the other side of zero and on the other side of the average right that that's a that's a hard filter so if you want to double filter it i guess is what i'm saying are we about are well I, shit sorry there's three there's three filters in place here are we out of the chop zone what side of the average the blue line are we on and is the rsi rising or falling now here, even though I get this little, I get a little three bar sequence here where I go green, where, where the RSI is rising, right? So that's what creates the little green line there as the RSI starts to rise. Bring this back down, right? Look at the, look at the edge, right? This is not, so this is absolutely not a long we want to take ever. Ever. doesn't matter what's there this is preventing us from taking that oh by the way what's the background color of the pitch right no buys no buys this is screaming at you do not buy it look, look at the look at the vortex red look at the MACD dots red look at the RSI red and below the average look at the pitch red yet I I've done it myself 
it takes time to build this discipline because you're going to see this and you're going to go, oh, fuck, man. All right. So, okay, well, maybe I'll get the trip over the river. You know, so I certainly you'd be watching the tick. Okay, it looks like I got a 50. I'm at VWAP here. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that see what happens. Right, this, right, you know, people laugh at me, but I, I, I literally did these color codings for my benefit. And I just, so that I don't buy that. And don't say, hey, dumbass, why are you buying that? These are my dumbass filters. Because I have a, a real, I, I'm, I will, I'll damn near take every pivot, right? I, I, my challenge is, is over trading. So much of this was designed to keep me from wanting to pull the trigger because I'm an aggressive trader. I want to get every pivot. So I, have to, I had to discipline myself and put things in front of me so that the market was screaming at me. It's sort of like the five-year-old test that I've often referred to. If you give this, these rules to a five-year-old, they're not going to take that trade. We think, oh, you know, I can kind of feel the market feels strong today. Oh, that tick looks like it's hop, hopping. Ah, oh, fuck that. I'm going to take it. Even though this is telling me no, I kind of hunch. I kind of feel that. Right, so then, then what do you do, right? So then you're already setting yourself up for a bad day. So you take it, you get immediately stopped out. You probably take a full hit, right? So two, three lot, you know, you lost three, at least 300 bucks there. So now, you, now, you're, now you're mentally, you've just said, oh, fuck, why? I'm such a dumbass. Why? Look, I, I built these indicators so I wouldn't take that. And, I'm and I took it anyway, right? Now you're not self-flogging, right? Which is a huge, you know, the, the mental side of trading is, is just as important as what's happening here. And it comes with consistency and, and screen time and discipline and reading your indicators day in, day out. So you know, hey, that's telling me, don't take that. All right, I've done it enough times to where I know now not to take that. Now, look, remember, we're always thinking in threes. So what, what happens here? So I, I get a little push down. Now, again, because now I've, so look here, two things. Number one, I've completed a little three here. Right? There's my little three that I completed. Now I get it, the start on something. Now, so one thought is that's, that, that's, this could be the push up. I'm going to extend it just to show you. Oh, well, maybe I got another three. Now I'm going up. Right? But at the same time, right? so you, you could be thinking that, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's the next three? Next three. All right. What do we do? We retrace. Okay, stop right there. Right, right on this pivot. What do I got down here? Well, number one, where's the pitch? What's the color of the background? No buying. Where are we here? We're below the average, and now we're dropping below zero. Look, look at the, the edge. Can't even make it into the river. Right? I, don't even get, I don't even get wet. Right? I just I come right up to the edge. Down we go. I got a little toe in right here. Right? So series of threes, series of threes. Now I get right here. Now here, this, this, is, you know, this is the trade-off you make. Now, oh, is that a measured? No, it's not. So it looks like it went deeper. Okay, so we must have broken it on this side, right? So we break by a few ticks. So therefore, you likely, you know, you'd be you'd be questioning whether or not you want this want this trade because you'd be concerned about this. You'd be concerned about that. Right right here on the hard right edge, you're worried about that because you don't know what's coming, right? It's always easy after the fact. You go, "Oh, well, of course I wouldn't take that." But at that moment in time, as it's retracing, what have I got? I've got a series of lower lows and lower highs. Now I get right here, now I'm back to VWAP. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, look underneath. Okay, number one, vortex. Number two, where's, where's the edge, right? We, we've got signs of strength here, and we're hugging the outside line, right? The strongest, strongest signal. Now, of course, it, it looks a little different in, with Renko bars because of the consistent trend. We lose the noise, right, that you get in a, in, a, in a typical tick chart or a minute chart. You lose the chop. So after the fact, it just looks like a sustained move. But if you looked at that on a tick chart, there'd be some wobble within that. But it, it, of course, this is one of the advantages of Renko. We get these clear lines, Right, so here now, as it as we start to roll over here, now now we're com so th this was the one where we broke the golden zone. Now here you're waiting, you don't get the trade. It it's not offered here. Oh come here, right? So we don't we don't get what we want here. We don't get this. We don't get that, right? Because we want to think in threes. Uh, all I, now I get a three, but it's at a larger degree. So while it didn't, it's not a perfect measured move. I do get. I do. God damn it! I struggle with that. I do get a three, right? A, B, C, think of it that way. Swing, internal retracement that goes external. However you want to think about it. Okay, so you, you, the, the, you, we missed this trade. We're not taking this trade. 
Now, you, you can make a case, all right, with the new stuff we just looked at. I am, I went outside, I got a little separation. Now we go, all right, so there, you're right, I'm, I'm kind of mixing, you know, methods here. So there's, this could have been a trade if you're looking at, right, if you had the, the Keltner channel on and you had, you know, you had all the conditions, but you're right in the middle of the IB, so likely not. You're not likely pushing the uh, 3 ATR or 4TR uh, Keltner channel here. So this is a trade we're, not, we're missing. We're not participating in that trade, right? Some of these, you just, they're going to go. What, what you hope, again, what you're hoping is to see that so you can get in. Right, so you can take that trade. We don't get it. Okay, so we come up here. Now here's our first test IB high. You know, we 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 all know that this is an opportunity here. Now look, right, right, all right. So th this is a trade here. Now this we're very very much we're tick focused here on what the tick looks like when we get up here. But as we come back down, right, everybody now we all go red. Now here's here's the trade. Okay, now since we missed this one, now I get up here. Now wait a minute, what's going on here? Right now, at this point, I don't know. We don't know if we're going to get that, right? We might be thinking that. Well, now, as we get to this point here and we start to soften, well, number one, look look at the wicked wave, right? Do we have trend here? Do we have trend? All right, look, look here. We're, we're in, the, so we're in the chop zone. Look, look at the contraction of volatility here as the Bollinger Bands squeeze. Now I got a very, very narrow river. So what do, what do I have here, right? All the shit that kills Renko traders right there, right? Because you don't know, right? You, you, you don't know which one's going to go. What is, are we going down? Are we going up? We're just, now it's just chop. Now look here, right? This is a great example of ex just what we want to avoid, right? We're in the chop zone. We're out of the chop zone. We're in the chop zone. Look at the narrow, narrow range here. This is screaming at you, chop zone. Right, what's the time of day? Right, this is about noon. Well, we go into it actually kind of early, 11:30-ish. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Chop zone, t tiny, narrow river, narrow river. Nothing here. The, the 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 pitch is kind of going green, white, green, white. Let's push over here. Right, this right clearly. Now, here here's something that happens. All right, I get a golden zone. Okay, now do I want that trade? Do I do I really have a three? Well, you know, look at look at the series of threes that are here, right? So you've got this series of threes. Now you got that one. Then you got, th well, you can see it. This one. Then I get this one. Then I got this one. Right? So m maybe you make the case here that you, you've done this. Right? You got a three. But here's the trade we want because I get a golden zone. Now, th are the conditions right to take that? Well, bit of a judgment call. Bit of a judgment call. But here's the safer trade, right? And I, I, you guys see me describe this in videos a thousand times. We don't necessarily need to pick the turn. Now you can, right? I mean, you, you, there was a trade here, but this is the better trade right here because we we know where our stop needs to be. We we know what's there, and you you could do it this way. You can say, okay, I got. I, oh, shit. Uh, see if I can get that to pop for me. It may not. No, it's not. Here, I'm just going to draw it. It's because it's keyed to what's happening in real time on the right edge. Okay, so I've got this this little demand zone here. Well, here, here, if I pull this up, right? So we had to have the buy volume come in here to reverse the bars, right? So that, that's why volume stands out so much with Renko bars. But since we're not time-based, this can this can happen in a second. But for, for to turn the pivot, to, to, to have it reversed by 14 ticks, I got to have some buy volume come in there, right? That's what creates the wick. So the push, the push here, this is the better, this is the trade, I can get it here, is this. So number one, as we push back this way, I'm now, I, I, this is the first time I've got a higher low. Now look what's happening here. Now I do happen to get a squeeze right here. So this is you know unfortunate example here. I've got a squeeze, but I come out of the squeeze. Now I'm strong. Now if you didn't take that one and it, right, you, you get another chance here, because you're like oh shit I don't know there's a squeeze there. I'm right at VWAP. You know we've just been chopping for the last hour and a half. Do I want to take that trade? Maybe not. Maybe not because of that. So you're you know, it's a bit of a judgment call, and you don't know it's a higher low until we get about here. Now look what happens fire now we're rising now we're green right you guys have seen me do that many times where I'll just I'll draw a line that say okay at this moment in time everything is firing on the buy side right right here okay everybody's aligned edge says go 
wicked wave, you're in the chop zone. That's your negative here. That's why this is a judgment call. But you get the opportunity to go again because here's the next pullback, right? So again, we're always since we're always thinking in threes, what do I get here, right? I get the swing, I get the retrace, and I, there's my three. Now look look what happens to the edge, right? Again, I'm in the river, but I can't get across. Now here's this is you know part of the just the getting to know these indicators. Now you might hesitate here since you're under the average. So this again comes with time and screen time and just watching how these move. You might hesitate here. So if you had a, if you were have, having hard discipline on this, that would filter you out of this trade. You might say, mm, I don't take it. Even though the RSI is rising, I'm below the average, right? Bit of a judgment call as to whether or not you're going to take that. You've got this now pushing, and there's the possibility that we could dip back down, right? Look at how narrow the bands are. So this is a bit of a, you know, I sure would be paying attention to what the tick looked like. All right, so, but if, if we push out there, you actually get another chance to go again. So here's the next little three, right? So we, we push, we come back. Now, look, what are we doing? We're tapping the, the IB high. We're kind of testing this prior structure here. There's the little test. Now, as we push away from that, big spike of volume right here. Look at the spike of volume. Look at the edge, right? We're, now we're kicking outside. Now look at the wicked wave, right? Everything's rising. We got that one little red bar, which is just what we want. That creates the pullback, which creates the continuation. So you get the continuation signal. Look at the pitch hard green All right so th there's a trade now d do you take that now how far do you take that All right would well, you get to target well you probably pull one off there now this uh, you guys have seen me um use a variety of you know I kind of switch it up just to demonstrate they're all equally good often I'll use the devil bands here at a 34 and a 1 ATR for my little retrace holder I'm mean, here I'm just using the um the uh, trailing stop so if we look at what I've got here and this is you know they're, they're equally effective I just I switch them up right partly I'm demonstrating so I'm using the TDU trailing stop I've got an ATR multiplier of two and an ATR period of five so w one of the advantages of this although you can do it with the with the um, devil bands as well by attaching to either the center or the outside line you can just attach your your runner stop there so you're gonna get the majority of it so, the, so instead of just going, oh, I'm up, to, uh, you know, 150 bucks here on the runner, I'm going to take it. If you t if you attach your 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 uh, your runner's stop to the ATR here or to the trailing stop, which is ATR based, it'll just carry you on all the way, and you get stopped out right here. But you'll get the majority of that move. Now at the pivot, right? What happens? Right down we go. Let's see how am I doing on time? Oh shit, there's 32 minutes. Okay, let me let me just go back a day or two and just see if I can find a few other examples to kind of. Well, this let's get it. Let's get during the. Ah oh, shit, I'm running out of days. Uh, I think we looked at that one. Did we look at that one? Well, here, here's another one. Actually, decent example here. I, I can't remember if we looked. No, I don't think we did. Right, so because we were looking intraday. Right, so here here's here's the here's the perfect. Okay, so look what we get down here. So we get a three. Oh, God damn it. Come here. I get this. I, I got a three. So something has completed. Now, do, do, I, I don't know, right? Since I'm going up here, I don't know if I'm going to get, I'm going to run into that because that's going to be there, right? We know that's going to be there, right? We know it's going to be there. So the first thing I got to do is get through that. Once I get through that, what do I want? I want the next one. So this one is sitting here. Now, look, look where we are. Now, again, this is a judgment call. This is 6.30 in the morning. Maybe not. Maybe you don't take this. And we're, we're underneath the average, but we're, rise, we're also in the chop zone. Now, are we taking that? It's judgment call. Now, as we, as we look here, we get just barely on the other side of the river. Now, we're back in. Now, as we get right here, and this, again, we're kind of doing that same thing that you'll see me do. Now, right, right here, everybody is in alignment. Now, look, look at the vortex. That's the center line of the edge. The vortex is green. We're, we've, we've, we've come down, gone outside the river. Now we're back in. RSI is rising. The wicked wave is green. Now we're rising. We're crossing the average, and the pitch is green. Background is green. Right. So this is a trade we want. And oh, by the way, right, golden zone. So here's your target. Here's the measured move target. So you probably, your scalp went out here. You got, I don't know, whatever you're after, four, five, six, seven, eight ticks here, and your runner is out here. If you're, if you're attaching it to the ATR stop, you're out right here at VWAP. Oh, let's see if I can find another good example or two here. Let's go look here when we have bigger trend. 
Oh, here, this is all. We've got a lot of squeeze here. Let me... I thought I'd put 10 days on this. Oh, uh, this, this could work here. Okay, so here, here, come, come. We've got a little bit of a three here, right? I'm just, I really want to harp on this until you, you're always looking in this context of threes, right? So there's my three. Right now, I'm coming up here. Now, I don't know if I'm doing that or if I'm gonna get through the measured move here. Right? We don't know. All right, so as we get there, you know, vortex is green. I've just cleared the other side of the river. RSI is rising in green here. Do I want to buy right into that measured move? Uh, you know, it's a bit of a, you, you'd be watching the tick, of course. That's 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, you're certainly, you know, as we sit here hovering, this this is always a kind of a dangerous area to trade, right? Right as we go, at, we're, as we're waffling back around VWAP, you know, uh, upside, downside, right? Always safer when we get far away from VWAP to start looking for longs to get back to VWAP. And we get too far above it, we're looking for that trade to come back to VWAP, right? And, Large players, they want it, they, they measure their day based on how where they enter relative to VWAP. So we know when it gets too far away, that's that's likely to be pushed down. If it gets too far below, you know, of course, there are going to be days here where news or whatever is driving the market where it's not going to make it back. But almost always, you'll find the market trying to get back to VWAP at, you know, throughout the course of the day. So here, if you're taking this, you know, th this is this is questionable. But look here as we as we come down here, and I, this may have been what we were just looking at. But it, as we get the pivot here, now I get the swing again you don't know at that moment in time if we're going to do this that's certainly a possibility but look what's happening here now everything is starting to get green here so I'm rising I'm, I'm over the river vortex is green do I want to buy that probably not do I want to sell it mm, I don't know that I want to sell it, it looks like it, you could have had another measured move here I don't know that I want to sell that oh, god damn it that's annoying come here Okay, right, right to the golden zone. Do I want to sell that? Probably not. All right, everything's green here. You know, so that's that's one of those judgment calls. So, but if you if you saw it come right and you saw it move away, well, you're assuming, of course, we're assuming that that's going right here, right, to get to that target, right. But what happens, right? Note again, right, and th this is re this is very common. You'll see this, is, and this is something to watch for. I get to the center line of the edge, and now I'm starting to move higher again. Vortex is green. RSI is on the other side of the average and rising. Now I get a little dip here where I go red, and that's right here I start to come again. All right, so now, now again, we're right here next to VWAP here, and you can see this little little chop here is just like I, I just drew it over here, saying that's the kind of shit you got to be careful of as we're waffling around VWAP. Got to be look, we go into a squeeze right there, squeeze. Right, we're in the chop zone. Right, you gotta you gotta pay attention to the chop zone. You gotta watch for that. Just like these are, I mean, a baby whale make this harder to miss so th this is why i put these in yellow so i don't miss it dumbass oh it was a squeeze you dumbass you don't want to trade that right? my dumbass filters so as we get up here let's see if i can find a decent mm, it's not great here because we just got this chop well this is all right so i've come down here i've broken i've broken the ib high I, look, so if we think about what we were just talking about in the other example here of the edge, I've created that energy potential, and I come back in. Now, do I do I want to try and buy it right here? No, right, because that's not part of a three. We always want to be thinking in three. So if I think I got a pivot, what I'm waiting for is the next retrace to give me a higher low before we go and we get our three here. All right. So now. We, we looked at an example earlier where you got the pivot and it just went straight, didn't give you a chance to get in. Here's what you're hoping for. And that also is actually, this may be a good segue into cutting the size of the bars down. You're going to see a few more of these pullbacks. But here's the trade, right? Note here, we don't, we get, a, a, you know, we get wet, but we don't cross the river. Now we're up here. Now look what happens here. Oh, so here, here's a decent example where, okay, you got the long here. Do you want this short? Well, you know, at the pivot, at the golden zone, we haven't crossed back in yet. We're, RSI is still green, although all of a sudden it's starting to fall. We don't get on the other side of the average. And now here, this again, like you've seen me do many times, look how everybody gets in line right here. Right here. It was really the, the, the pitch goes first. Well, you can make the case here that, that the, 
the the edge makes the first pivot but look at the look at the uh, the wicked wave here they go together at this on the same bar next bar we're in the river and the RSI has now is now falling it's going red now look at the edge or pardon me look at the pitch we go from green to transition now here we hit red so is is that a trade you take well a, a bit of a judgment call there you know this is you know for the for the aggressive trader perhaps you're making the case that it, this is the 3 that this is it's a larger 3 that we're in so maybe but the the safer trade would have been to look for this right do i get that lower high to take me in right we don't right so in this in this case we're up we don't we don't you would have seen it reflected here so a little trip back into the river would have been ideal maybe maybe even tapping the outer edge before it rolls over that's the trade you want we don't we don't get it here right you don't get it you you know the, the b forcing this kind of discipline you're going to miss trades but the the point is not, he with the most trades is not the winner right so if you only took two trades but they were you know beautiful setups that met all the criteria here you made money for the day you fucking care right it was only two trades the guy with 25 trades certainly going to have higher commission costs right may or may not have out traded you and you know have had a better day but i'd rather pick really really perfectly technical setup trades those you pull the trigger you're comfortable you, the best trades almost always go your way almost you, you almost never feel any pressure you're in it it starts to move your way you know you, you there's a stress reduction the, the stress is always when you first go in if the market moves against you right a lot a lot of professional tra traders will tell you that if, if the market doesn't go your way almost immediately just get the fuck out what you want is that trade where you're in, you get the turn, it starts to move, and it's just stress-free, right? And that's just a question of money management and, and managing the trade. Where's your stop? You know, where's your first one go out? What's the position sizing? Is there a place to add? So if you, had, if you had had this kind of setup here that gave you this, the ideal scenario, right, would have been that. So you could get into the three. Right, in that, that particular case, uh, you didn't get it. Okay, so I ho hopefully that's giving you just some some just a different perspective on how to look the and how to read these. The, the hardcore filter they have to all be in alignment. A little bit more judgment. Now let's just just finish up here. Shit, how am I doing? Twenty. Fuck. Sorry, this is gonna be long. Um, let me get that off of here. Okay, so let the the one thing we can add to this. Hoping it wouldn't be this long. Okay, let's let's put here's the sweetener. It doesn't matter what your template is. There, this this is never anything but a benefit to whatever template you're running, and that's to put the delta volume waves on. Now I've I've, not, I've hidden it here. Let's make it visible again. Okay, so let's just quickly go look at a few of those pivots here. Let's see, kicks. There we go. Okay, so let's let's look at a few of those pivots. And see if there would have been any insight here. Now here, if I had an imbalance here, I might be more more interested in that short. I don't get one here. Now get, an imbalance is not a requirement. Right? It's not a requirement to take a trade, but it's it's one more additional. Boy, if I can see that sellers are overwhelming buyers here, offers to bids. Boy, that makes it a little easier to pull the trigger right there. Oh, let's go let's see if we can get any help. Mm, where I can, if I can find an imbalance that would have been meaningful again, Fridays so often just suck. Um, you got a buy imbalance here. That's not a great example. Let's see if I can find something here that would be consistent with what we were just looking at. Well, this is this is all right here. All right, so we've had. We've had this, so we're always looking at in a series of threes. So the first three completes here. So here's the little, that's the completed three. That's the first one that completes. Now I get another pullback, right? So is this part of the three? Well, I come right to a 50. I've, I've had the IB reaction. I've come right to the 50. Now I'm, I'm start. I'm, no, here, we don't cross the river. Now, again, judgment call, right? You know, this a hard filter would say no, because I'm not on the other side of the average until I get to here. But look, I get, well, it's a little hard to see. I get a buy imbalance right here, right? So 662 bids are overwhelming offers so I get a buy imbalance on the pivot now I don't know that until I get two bars away but if I see that and then this starts to move this is moving this is all green then it makes it a little easier to take that trade a little bit easier right you don't now remember since it's it's a Renko brick and not not a tick or a time-based chart two two bars which is a requirement for this to be established 
two bars can come in t you know, seconds, right? Because two Renko bars, right, we, since we have no time filter, can happen in a matter of seconds, as opposed to if you're on a one-minute chart, you've got to wait two minutes, right? The trade can be come and gone in two minutes. Even on a tick chart, right, you can move fairly far, but, you know, if you're, depending on your tick size, if you're in the ES and you're working with a 2,000 tick or higher, you know, that's, that could be a long wait before you get two, two, bar, two higher highs in this case to lock in the pivot. But j just kind of showing, let's see if I've got anything here that would just help enhance that. Here's another one. Uh, let's go back another day, see if I can find it perfectly suited. Oh, shit. How many days do I have here? Give me a second, guys. I thought I'd done 10 days. No, I didn't. I got it. I think I could sworn I did it. Okay, let me let me get a few more days. So I've just got a few days there. Let me go back here and see if I can bear with me here. Find a few other examples here while this starts to, starts to load. Imbalance here at the at the golden zone. Yeah, let's go back. Find something, maybe one of these higher pivots. Okay, this is this is decent here. Okay, so look, so I'm getting, I, I get a selling button. Now look right here. So here's the, here's the 50 to the golden zone, right, right here, right. So we're on alert right now as we get up here. Now look, as we go up for that, la so here's the sell imbalance. We get a little buy imbalance. What time is that? Oh, that's 116. So th this is a little bit. Now that's very, very narrow range here. What do we got there? That's it's a 10 tick range right here but as we start to come down now all of this lines up right we get below the average RSI is falling we get on the other side of the river the the pitch is red now you get a little pullback right so here so if you didn't if you were not sure because for whatever reason you got a buy and bounce sell and bounce I'm not sure I'm not sure now here's the trade all right so we get here now up right I get a sell imbalance right here all right there's the three all right there's the pivot now look toe in the water back outside the river, heading down, we're below the average, we come out of the chop zone, background is red. Uh, I wasn't sure about that one, so I'm going to wait till I get the next one. All right, right to a, now, we get we are waffling right around VWAP here, so judgment call as to whether you're taking that. If you're going to hard, put the hard filter of the wicked wave, you wouldn't take it because you're on the other side of the edge, or of the average. Oh, let's see if I can get something that's really juicy here. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking for imbalances here. Again, it's not a requirement that you get an imbalance. It's just a, a sweetener if you can find it. Mm, yeah, I got looking for a box here. Uh, maybe I'm not gonna find any. I didn't. I didn't go through, and I don't since I don't cherry pick things. I just do them. I just you know, I I just hit record and start talking. Um, nothing, nothing. Okay, nothing really standing out here. So let, let's do this, and, I, and I'll finish up here since I'm running way longer. Let's let's take the same. Let me get over here. We'll go all the way back to Friday. Let's reset this now. Again, seven two fourteen. It's a pretty big bar size. Right? It, may, it may not be a risk tolerance that's appropriate for all of you guys. So let's go down one. So now I'm going to the four one seven. So you're going to get a whole lot more detail, but you're also going to get a whole lot more swings, which means you're going to get a whole lot more threes as opportunities to trade. Now let's not focus on the on the end of the day. All right. So well, here here's a little three where we get an imbalance. Here's one. You can see relatively early, right? That you may not have seen. You may not have seen uh, on the larger brick size here. So we, here's our three. Right? Here's our swing, our retrace. Now look, we don't make it across. We do get a we do, we do get a, a squeeze here. We get the swing. We come 50 to the tick, sell imbalance. I move away, edge. Now edge is falling, right? It's question mark as to whether or not you're taking that because we're on the other side of the average. This is. This takes time, right, to get to where you're comfortable taking that. And there, there's going to be times where you're going to take it, and you're going to get stopped out, and you're like, God damn it, I shouldn't have taken it. It was on the other side of the average. It's, this is a, a judgment you have to make. There are times where it's going to carry on, and it's going to be a great trade. There are other times when you're going to you're going to say, Oh, I, sh I shouldn't have taken it. So th there has to be more there. It can't be, oh, just one of these. So ideally, you're getting two out of three or structure or an, or an imbalance or a measured move, something to justify, hmm, there's enough evidence here that I want to take this even though I'm on the other side of the average. So at, at least here at the pivot, as we move away, now the RSI is declining, but we don't cross the RSI. Oh, the average, you're going to always lag the average a bit. Right? 
All right, let me, I'll try and wrap up here. Let's see if there's anything better here. We'll get a few sell imbalances here, but you're right in a chop zone, or right in a, in a squeeze. Uh, of course, right throughout the course of the day, they'll, they'll come. This is not bad here. All right, so here's, I've got a series of three, so I get this little three, and then here's the, here's the last little three. Now here, I come up here. Now I've got two al I've got two algo targets. So both those measured moves are getting their targets here. Now I don't really see what what you would want here is this, right? I don't get it, right? It just goes straight, right? Not until I get right here. Now is that is that a trade you want? Well, questionable, right? We're we're right back to hovering around VWAP, right? Remember, market's gonna hug around the VWAP. But note here, we don't get on the other side of the river. Right now, are you taking that? Well, questionable, right? Note we're on the other side of the average. Trying to find a, just a drop-dead gorgeous one. Well, okay, you know, very variable here in that I've got a little, so here, here's the, so I get a swing, lower low, right? Do I want to try and take this? Maybe not, right? So we're on the wrong side here in the chop zone, but I get a little pullback here and then I get a buy imbalance on this side. Now that's, that's a better trade than you realize. I mean, if you, you took that there, there's, there's 17 ticks. Well, same kind of thing here. We got a little squeeze here. Yeah, let's find something. This trying to get you a perfect one. Well, w one thing you'll find when you go down to these smaller tick sizes, the amount of measured moves you're going to see is is it's it's mind bending, right? How many there are? How often this this thing pays? You know, per perhaps here you got a golden zone, little swing, get an imbalance here. We're pushing outside the river. We're below the average. Everything's red here. So this potentially now that's a trade it would take you all the way. That's again, that's a better trade than you realize. Even if you took the second one, there's 17 ticks. Anyway, okay, you guys, you guys get the point. I was trying to find you an absolutely perfect one. Oh, maybe I'm not going to find one. So we we have so many more bars now because we we've shrunk down to a 417 here. I mean, I'd get you a perfect one. This is this is decent here. We get a little imbalance, push up to target, All right? Push outside. We're above the the average. We go positive right here on the pitch. But so I, I guess the the point is, I want you guys to know what you're looking for. And if you get an imbalance at one of these pivots, just all that better. Just gives you a little bit more confidence. So it, it's really getting a feel for how the three of these work together. And one can be a filter to the other. One can be the entry that would put you in. In, in in combination with what you're reading here on your indicators. So it, it this takes practice, it takes time, it takes sticking with this and watching it day after day after day so you get a feel for it. What does it tend to do? What do we tend to do when we get this big separation and we're crossing the zero line and we're you know what are we doing in the context of where's the last three, where's VWAP, where's the IB, all of the things that we deal with, where's the structure, where's the last higher low, all of those things that we're processing in our minds throughout the course of the day, these are really really effective tools but you got to know what they're trying to tell you i mean here being a, just a, you know just a good example here look at how we're just waffling here look at the contract look at the difference of the swing range here we get here oh, we get a squeeze right in the middle of it we're, we're from the chop zone here's the trade right this is what you want when we get these big pushes away from the chop zone big pushes right outside the outside back in the river other side of the river that wasn't bad again not bad other side of the river Everybody goes down, right? Pay attention to your dumbass filters. Okay, guys, there's 53 minutes. That's probably way longer than I needed, but I'm just trying to find you a lot of good examples. Okay, there you go. Lots to chew on. We'll uh, you know, be implementing it this week, and we'll see how you guys do with it, if any of you are applying it, through what, uh, what you post in the room this week. Okay, guys, talk to you soon.